So in lesson number five, I'm looking at the iBook for the intro to app development with Swift. And in this lesson, we are not using a playground to experiment or learn. What we're talking about now is actually building our first app. And we're going to use Xcode to build the app. You can go ahead and read through this chapter and it's going to cover everything that I'm going to demonstrate in this video. So let's go ahead and minimize that. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and run Xcode. When Xcode runs, it's going to show, it might show this uh, welcome screen. If you don't see the welcome screen, it may just show Xcode up here in the menu bar. And so what I want to do is create a new Xcode project. And so if you see this window, you can go ahead and click create new Xcode project. Or if you don't see that, you can just from Xcode, choose file, new and project. And this brings us to a project wizard, which takes us through a few steps. Notice here at the top, you have iOS, watch OS, TV. These are the different types of applications you can build. We want to make sure iOS is selected. And the first one, let's go ahead and choose single view application and then choose next. All right, we can give this a name. I'm going to go ahead and just call this first app. Team is if you have an Apple developer account, you can log in there. Organization name, this shows up within your source code in comments that indicates who wrote the source code. So you could put your name there or if your company name. Then we have what we call organization identifier. Notice down here it says bundle identifier and then it has the name of the app and it says com.example. So this is just a generic domain identifier. If you happen to have a website or a business website that you run, you could re what we call a reverse don domain name. So instead of example.com, it was com.example. All right, let's leave these as defaults. I'm actually going to uncheck unit tests and uncheck UI tests. These are things we're not going to cover in this course. But all it does is it adds some extra build targets, and we're not going to worry about those. So let's go ahead and choose next. All right, now it's going to ask where we want to save this. It's going to create a folder. So remember where you have it. I'm just going to put it on the desktop. Uh, if you have source control, if you're familiar with Git, you can keep that checked. If you're not familiar with it, you can uncheck that. We are not going to review that today. Go ahead and click Create. All right, here you are in Xcode. This is quite different than a playground. A playground is an experimental place where you can try out code and see how it runs. But this is your main development environment. This is where you're going to live as a developer. So we want to become familiar with this so that we can see how things work. All right, just wanted to point out that over here on my desktop, it created this folder. So let's say I wanted to close out of this project and I want to, if I wanted to open this project, I could go to the folder and then notice how it says first app dot Xcode proj. If I double click that file, it's going to bring me right back to the project. Or let's say I've closed out of the project and I have opened Xcode. Notice here that it's listed on the right of this. So there I could select it again, or I could just go file and say open recently. And there it is. All right, let me expand this. Let's take a minute and talk about these different windows. We have a number of options up here on this toolbar. We have some s screens that are segmented. So we have over here on the left, we have what we call the nav the uh, navigator, which represents you can navigate the folders. You can, there's a number of options here. We're not going to cover all of these right now, but we'll look at these as we go. But these are options that uh, appear within this navigator on the left. Now, come over here to the top right. Notice here we have this icon hide or show the navigator. So I just uh, hid the navigator and I want to show it. We have hide or show the debug area. Now the debug area is similar. We saw it earlier in a previous video. Uh, we can hide or show that. And then here 
On the right, we have what we call the utilities panel, which is this right side, and we can hide it or show it. This section in the middle is most is what we call the editor window, and this is where we will make changes to various things within the application. So if I go over to my to the navigator, I want to make sure I'm in the folder section. And notice here, these are our files that were created for us. So notice how this one says .swift, uh, .storyboard, .xcassets, .storyboard, .plist. All these files were generated for us, and this is an application. It's ready to run. So if we want to see it in action, notice here up at the top, we have this build and run, and then we have what we call a scheme, and then we have here the device that we're going to run on. So if I click this, I happen to have uh, my old iPod Touch connected to the, to the computer. Um, we also have what we call iOS simulators. These are the simulators that are ready to build right now. So right now it's selected as iPhone 7 Plus. Let's go ahead and keep that selection. When I click this play button here, this build and run, it's going to run whatever selected here on the left on whatever selected here on the right. So I have this application and that's all that's listed, but I have all these other options, right? So when you go to click run, pay attention to what it is that it's going to run on, whether it's a simulator or a device. You could have multiple devices connected to your computer. You could build to your iPad, build to your iPhone, things like that. This is where it's selected. All right, let's go ahead and build run. Let's see what this does. First thing it's going to do is going to build the application. And then it's going to launch what we call the simulator. Now the simulator, and here I've run this before, and notice this says iPhone 7 Plus. Well, when you run it for the first time, it may be it may appear to be much larger. So the way I got to this point is I went over to Window to Scale. Notice how it's set to 33%. So it's scaling down to 33% of the size. Well, let's go to 100%. Well, it went off the screen, but here's what it looks like. Now, here's the problem. I am scrolling with my scroll wheel, scroll wheel on my mouse, and it went all the way to the top. This is huge. And the reason it does that is because the device, the iPhone 7 Plus, has a pixel density and a uh, screen resolution that is much higher than my computer monitor. So it's showing you the literal size of each pixel, but on my computer monitor, because the monitor is much smaller, what we call pixel density, then it's 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 much larger. It's it's huge, and you can't you can't use this. It's it's just unusable. So you can do a couple things. One, you can select window and choose scale and go back. So if I went to 33%, notice how it fits and it looks just like a little phone. The only drawback is, notice how it's a little pixelated. It's not really, it's not the best. You're kind of scaling down quite a bit. So it's not going to give you a clean look, but it's usable and you can do quite a bit with it. All right, let's change. The other option is instead of using the device and, and running it in a small scaled window, let's go back to Xcode and click Stop. Now let's choose a different device type. So you could choose like the iPhone 5S. Let's go ahead and run that. Now it's building the app. And what it's doing now is it's launching the simulator. But in this case, it's a little smaller. I'm scrolling here. It's, a, it's still, still a little bit big. If I go to scale, now I go to 75%. If it's a lot better and it's easier to see all of, on the screen at once. So this is one way to run your app. Then once you have tried it out in various simulators, let's go back and let's see what's happening in this. We want to do a little bit more than just run an app. Notice how it's empty. The screen is empty. We'll go ahead and click stop. Here, when you select this first 
what we call the project this is a is is the project file which represents a lot of things that we've talked about already the display name we're not going to cover all this right now but we'll come back to this notice here if we look at the storyboard if I look at main dot storyboard let's go ahead and click that you just want to click it once Notice that we're brought to this view, and hey, this is a this is this looks like a phone. If I come over here in this kind of secondary navigator, notice how I can click onto the top here, and if I click into this, this is called a view. So here's the view, and I have this is this is the view in the navigator here. If I select that, notice how it's highlighted and I can come back here and select that. Over here in my utilities panel, remember if you don't see this on the right, you may need to, to show it. Notice we have on the utility side, we have a number of options up here in this little secondary menu. Now the one that we're interested in, there's one called the attributes inspector. Now notice how I can I've, you know, when you select it here, it kind of highlights it, but if I click it now, it's still selected. What I want is I want to change the background color. Now you can, if I click here on these arrows, it brings up kind of a, a drop down selection. If I click within the color itself, it actually brings up this color window, which allows me to choose and there's a number of options. So if I were to click here, and notice how I can change the background color of the application of the view right there. I'm going to go ahead and close that. So now that's changed. Let's see that in action. So you let's go ahead and click run, the build and run button. Now it's going to launch this and it's going to run it in the simulator. And notice how the color changed. Pretty cool. Okay, let's do more than just a view. I'm actually going to select this and I'm going to press the delete key and notice how it's gone. I'm going to come over here to my utilities panel and down below notice how this is one section here and this is another section here and here you have a number of options and the option I want is this one here called the object gallery. Notice they have quite a few different items. You can scroll through here. These are various controls, which are visual elements or they're visual controls. They may not have a physical look to them, but they're something that you can place on the screen that they interact with other objects. Things like labels, buttons, text fields, things like that. If I want to scroll down, you can scroll quite a bit and there's one called image view. Notice that image view. I'm going to go ahead and click image view and I want to drag it and I want to drag it here and let go and notice how it put this image view right here. I just clicked away so that we could see that and if notice how if I click it here it showed it's highlighted. Anyway now we have a, an image view. Okay if I select the image view and I come over here and I'm looking at the, at the attributes inspector Notice it says image, and if I click here, I don't have any images. I don't have any images in my application. Well, in order to get an image into your application, you click the assets icon. And notice over here, there's, there's no images. Now there's this little blank template for app icon. We won't worry about that right now. But if I want an image, in this in my app then I need to drag it to the assets I need to drag it to this area here well if you happen to have an image somewhere that you've saved like a photo you've taken you could click and drag the photo here uh, if you don't you can go ahead and actually take a screenshot so the Mac has a built-in feature to do a screenshot I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this for a second notice if I press command shift and the number four, notice what happens to my cursor. Do you see this? Can you see this little cursor? 
Notice how it turns into a crosshairs and it's got some little indicator. If I go ahead and I click and then I drag, notice I'm dragging a, a, a large rectangle. And then as soon as I release, it makes a sound. And guess what? It created a screenshot. Again, that was holding, you press Command, then Shift, and then the number four, and then the cursor changes. If you don't actually want to take a, um, a screenshot, you just press Escape. OK, let's go to back to our project. I'm going to move this over so you can see this. Now, check this out. I've selected assets, .xk assets, xc assets, and then I go over here to wherever folder or wherever I have my photo, and I take it, and I drag it, and I let go. Check it out. Now it's an image. Awesome. Now, notice here it says 1x, 2x, 3x. If you're building for various screen sizes, you'll want to have the same image at higher resolutions. We'll cover that in another video, but for now, this is how we can access this screenshot. Now, notice how the name of it is this long screenshot. I don't want that name. I want to change that. So I clicked and I clicked a second time until it created this highlight. So if I click or if I press return, then it'll let me edit. So let's give this a different name and we'll just call this desktop scene Then press enter. And now that's an easier name. Okay, let's go back to main.storyboard. Notice we have our image view, UI image view, and I've selected it. Now notice over here my utilities panel under the attributes inspector. I now have image if I click that now, hey, there it is, desktop scene. Check that out. Now, you have a couple of options. Notice here it says content mode. I could change that, click the drop down, and I can change that to aspect fit. Notice how it fits, it scales it exactly the size of how I created it. So you have a number of options, but notice how it kind of what we call letterboxed it. If I go back, I could say scale to fit and then how it feels fits nicely and that's that works fine for me okay let's go ahead and run this see how it looks it's going to build and then it will launch the simulator and here it is check that out that's your first app you can put your own photo in there you can do uh, a number of cool things. Awesome.